Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Mandy from Hope Designs and I'm gonna do something kind of silly today. Um, I'm gonna jump on the marble bandwagon and I'm gonna do a pretty simple pour. Um, I had it in my mind to use some of these um, Artist Loft Premix pouring paints and do a wrecked ring pour with marbles because these work great for ring pours and I haven't done a ring pour in a really long time. And um, I was watching Lisa Wyatt's video the other day and I was pondering this. It was such funny timing. She actually used this and incorporated some primary elements to do a marble pour and I was like, that's genius. So I'm gonna link her channel and that video below. You should definitely check it out. It turned out really beautiful. Um, she did those in puddles. So she put down the black base and then she did puddles and then wrecked it. I'm gonna do that today, but then I would like to, in the future, um, incorporate them into the pour. So the only thing I'm a little shaky on is the consistency is a little bit different. So um, these are really good consistency for most of your pours. Um, so if you're new, they are a little bit more expensive. You can get them at Michael's. Um, and I know the coupon game at Michael's isn't great right now, but these are pretty good if you're new and you're trying to just kind of try a few things. Um, if you go back to the very, very early stages, I did ring pours with these a lot. Um, <clears throat> this is kind of the consistency. They're not great for like pearl pours and Dutch pours and things that, you know, your paints have to be really thin, but they're kind of thick. You can't really tell because this is black, but leaves a little bit of a trace like you might want with a flip cup or with a ring pour. So, and because they already have pouring medium, the colors stay kind of separated pretty nicely. They're kind of transparent, so that's the one downfall. Like I had some ring pours back in the day that were beautiful, 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 and then they would dry and the colors would be so dark um, because whatever the darkest color was would sort of dominate but they're still really great to work with. Um, so I'm going to use, so the primary elements have been mixed with polypour. Some of them were a little bit thick, so I added um, a just a little bit of water, uh, only a little bit at a time, and I still didn't get them very thin, so they're a little bit thicker than that. But I didn't want them to be too thick because sometimes if your top paint is too thick and your bottom layer dries too fast, it will cause it to crack and that's what I didn't want. And those um, Artist Loft paints, they do dry pretty quickly. So this is Passion. This is a beautiful color. So this is from the regular Primary Elements line. So the Passion will be semi-transparent. <clears throat> this one, sorry about my, I mixed these up earlier. This one is from the first glit set, and this one is called Greek Isles. So this one is semi-opaque. It's a beautiful blue. This one's a little bit thicker. <clears throat> I did thin it down just a little bit, but it has a little bit of a thicker um, mica in it, so that's they're just a little bit thicker. This one is also from that set and one of my favorites called Laguna Azul. So these are a little thick, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with it. But because these are thick, I will probably do these in alternating puddles instead of layering these on top of each other. Um and then I mixed up Merlot satin and then I was like, that doesn't really so much go with what we're doing here. So I put it aside for another time. This is Indian Spice. So this is from one of the bling it, this is one of the bling it colors, which means you can use it in a resin or an acrylic. So it's a beautiful gold, super sparkly and delicious. And you probably can't see all that sparkle because this light is kind of getting in the way. So let's get started. This is a 14 inch. You know, I don't know yet what to expect, so I'm just gonna use a level one canvas. I tape the back, put my push pins in. It's been a long time since I've done just a kind of a good old acrylic pour. 
and you can't deny that playing with marbles is a little bit fun. So I mostly just put this black in here to test the consistency. So, <clears throat> you know, marbles are one of the things you would think that all of us would have in our house, but like, I don't have any. So <laughs> I was like, where am I going to get some marbles? And I, I found some clear ones. They're kind of small like this. But I also didn't want to like buy a bunch of them and I have a bunch of them. So um, I also got this for a future pour to make a little bit of a different, um, maybe a bigger indentation. So I figured I'd show you guys where that might happen in the future. My torch also has resin on it from something I had to do earlier. And so <laughs> I have to put on one of these gloves for that. I should, probably should have gotten a spatula or something, but I didn't, so oh well. I'm going to get this mostly covered. I want to leave a little room to tilt, um, but I'm going to, this is probably going to kill this thing of paint almost, but I do so much with blooms and stuff. I love these paints, but I don't use them a ton, so... Um, when I was first doing ring pours and stuff, they were great because when you first start pouring, ring pours can be a little bit challenging from a consistency perspective because if you don't get the consistency right, um, you lose your rings, you know? And so <clears throat> I did them a lot at first to kind of get the technique down and then I was like, okay, now I can play around with how I, how I do my Pouring. Sorry, my brain is a little fried. I'm tired. Um, so I'm just going to kind of lightly cover my edges. I know I'm going to cover it in a second, but I just want to get kind of a decent... I tend to use too much paint, so I'm just going to move it around a little bit. We're going to put puddles on there, so it's not like there's going to be nothing on the canvas. It doesn't need to be perfectly coated like you would a Dutch pour. Um, but yeah, thank you, Lisa, for the inspiration, because I was totally pondering, you know, I was like, I got to do one of these fun marble pours. It's so hard for me to think about doing a painting without primary elements. And so I was like, maybe I'll just play around, do a ring pour with those paints. And so when she did this, I was like, that's a good idea. I was like, those paints are, you know, they have a decent viscosity. They might play well with, with some poly pour. And I asked her how it dried and she said it dried nicely. So before I, I, I love it when other artists try things um, and experiment for all of us so that we don't maybe have to take as many chances if we didn't learn from each other, right? So that's one of the wonderful things about being part of this wonderful art community. So I will link her channel. If you don't follow her, you definitely should. She does some beautiful work with acrylics, resin. She's also been doing some tumblers and stuff. So she's got a lot of diversity available. I know that I'm just talking a lot while I cover this, but <clears throat> hopefully I have a good enough base down. So yeah, this is just kind of a fun one. Um, I am gonna do one of these with the Bloom recipe. Um, I know Kathleen Miller's been doing a lot of them and they're really fun to watch. And I like, what I like about the Bloom recipe is when you use the house paint base, um, it creates almost like a pseudo swipe look when you're tilting it. Um, and I do like that look. That's one thing that's kind of fun about doing, doing that with, with the Bloom recipe. So I will do one. Um, I just didn't, I wanted to do one just kind of the regular way this time, and this was a fun way to do it. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> if you follow our channel now, you know I do a lot with the Bloom recipe, and I, I love it. I really love to do them. But I do other things, and I have in the past. And so um, way back in the day, I did ring pours and base pours and all that stuff. And I want to do some of that stuff so it's a little bit more current on our channel too so I'm gonna put my little glove on so I can touch my torch that has resin all over it my torch is an absolute disaster so if you see it 
don't judge it. So typically when we do blooms, you don't torch house paint. This is not house paint, so we do torch the bubbles. And because I don't do them very often, I almost always forget to do it. <clears throat> but if you wonder why people don't do that when they do blooms, it's because um, house paint will dry quicker and uh, you'll create this nasty like paint skin. So it's pretty gross. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna alternate the the blue and the Laguna Azul in puddles. I'm gonna try to be a little bit methodical, even though that's not what fluid art is about. I put way too much paint right there. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. These colors are amazing. It's, there's nothing quite as magical as the sparklies from color art. And I haven't mixed up my prison pour colors yet. I'm a little behind the eight ball, but I promise you I will. And I'll get something out there. I've also had some requests for some mixing uh, videos, like what I use in my mixes and stuff. So I do hope to get that out there. Kind of just need to do it when I'm already gonna do some mixing, you know? So let's see. Um, I think we'll do this. Make maybe smaller puddles. Those initial ones were kind of huge. <clears throat> I think I'm using way too much paint. Perhaps. Probably no doubt about it. And then I'm going to do <clears throat> the passion um, on top of the blue. Um, maybe smaller puddles there. So beautiful. Yep, I have too much paint on here. See what happens. Hopefully, mine dries nicely too. My puddles are awfully close to. Whoa! Just about went rogue there for a second. Um, and then I'm going to put the Indian spice on top of the green one. And then, oops, and maybe other places by accident. So this is, um, when I say polypore, um, that's the one that has a little varnish in it. So the Vivid Enamel is sort of just your untinted paint base. This is the untinted paint base that has varnish in it. So that's the difference. I know that that question comes up a lot. Uh, let's see, over here, I think what we'll do over here is do a gold puddle and then one here and then one here and then one here it's too much too much it's okay and then do uh, um, Maybe blue, just a little bit. Blue. This is the fun part about paint pouring is sometimes when you can just goof off and just do it for giggles. And the cool thing about doing puddles versus a ring pour is you're gonna keep some of your color separate. <clears throat> So that's kind of fun. So I'm just going to put a dab of the pink on, I'm actually going to put it on all of them because this one is one of the colors that's going to have the most transparency. So as this dries, this one won't be as loud as the others. So 
if there's a lot of this one versus the other two, that's okay. Or the other three. I'm gonna get a baby wipe, wipe my hands, and here we go. I'm gonna torch it real quick. Because we do have some bubbles, so let me grab my, my glove again. <clears throat> I feel like it's all about to run over the side, but it's okay. It's kind of fun, huh? These are fun to do petal pours with resin too. So if you've never, if you've always wanted to do resin art and you don't really know what to do, um, petal pours are kind of a fun way to play around with it for the first time. I need a toothpick. Some of these are not popping very well. I think I just got epoxy on the cabinet knob, so I'm going to need to address that in a minute. I went to go open the cabinet with my epoxy glove on, which wasn't the sharpest thing to do. So anyway, I hope everyone is doing well, staying healthy and safe. Okay, I'm a little nervous. So I'm gonna throw this guy right in the middle and then make a giant mess. All right, let me make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing before I make a mess for no good reason, okay. Let me maybe zoom you in a little bit. Uh, it's probably too much. Okay. This is pretty cool. It is oddly satisfying. This marble moves really slow, y'all. I think in Lisa's video she was using a pearl and <laughs> I think she called it the the pearl trail or something. It was moving slow, but it did a beautiful job. All right, so we've kind of gone in a square. Probably need to be less structured and kind of let it roam all over the place a little bit. Obviously the black is getting pretty swallowed up but that's okay. The black is not the superstar. And it will, it'll show. But I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys have been wondering, can I use my primary elements for this? Well, yes, you can. Let's let it fall off and we might put it back on. Let me clean them off. <clears throat> my hands are covered in paint and so is this marble so I love a lot of the interest that we have I think I might want to let it go through I don't know part of me thinks I should just tilt it oh my gosh my hands are so dirty sorry I'm getting a wipe over here I wish you guys could tell me what to do um, part of me thinks I should just tilt it and kind of let it continue to shape out, but um, <laughs> my hands are so dirty. <laughs> They're like pigmented because of color art being so pigmented. Can't say that it's not colorful, right? And then black paint. These gloves are kind of just too big. They're like an extra large and they're just too big to be able to feel when I'm tilting things around. So sometimes I'm just like, nah, it's not going to work with the gloves. And you know, it's not that easy to get gloves nowadays without spending a small fortune. All right, so let's put this guy, I'm gonna put him back down here. I don't know if you can see where I put him and let him come from the corner. And let him wreck through some of this. And let's, Kind of pushing some of the blue and the or, uh, the Greek Isles and the passion into the other colors a little bit, which is cool. And we're gonna let it just go kind of a little crazy, maybe one more time around, and then we'll tilt it, and then that'll be a a donezo. We'll let it dry, and I'll decide if I want to just varnish it or resin it. I'm 
gonna let it just roll off. And now we're gonna tilt it. It's super pretty, right? So let's torch it. And um, I'm just gonna grab my torch with this wipey because most of these bubbles I'm gonna have to get like a toothpick anyway because they're very they're very large like gloss varnish type bubbles that you get with thicker paint um yeah let me and so you really could do this with little house paint as your base too if you didn't add any water to your primary elements because they have that poly pour can be used as a bloom base so if you were like hey I want to do this you could use house paint you might if your house paint is very thick you might need to thin it out a little bit Get over here marble with just a tiny bit of water not a lot um, but otherwise, there's a goober in my paint. My push pin wants to come out because this paint is very glossy. So I don't want to crazy tilt it. I'm just tilting it a little bit to make sure there's not too much paint left on. But I like it. I'm sorry. I know this is not the greatest view for you guys, but... I definitely used probably too much paint. Well, there's no probably about it. I used too much paint. But, like I said, it's been a while since I've done a regular pour. So it's kind of difficult to determine that. My corners want to be a little dysfunctional over here. So, but yeah, this is a lot of fun. And these are beautiful colors, no matter how they ended up on the canvas. That's the great thing, is the colors are going to do some amazing stuff. Whether my design works out or not, you know. And that's not the greatest way to touch up that corner that I just did, but it's what I did. So, yeah, this is fun. And, um have another couple of ideas up my sleeve for things that I would like to try that are a little bit different for me anyway maybe not for everyone so this corner is showing some of the white and I don't particularly love that so I'm just gonna try to cover it up a little bit I'm gonna tilt back over there but just want to make sure it's covered The one thing I don't miss, I like to tilt, but when you get used to spinning and you don't have to worry about losing your footing with your push pins and all that, <laughs> you don't miss it as much, you know? So, so my lines got a little squiggly as I tilted just because I had too much paint on, um, but I, I still like it. So... Oh, I forgot to mention, I'm so sorry. Uh, you can use my code and get anything for 20% off from the Color Art website. The code is Mandy1120. And as you can see, these colors are amazing. The Prism Pour would probably be fun for this too. I would probably still mix with a little bit of um, Poly Pour or something just because it's paint, you know, and you want to give it enough body to blend in with what you're, you're painting. But you can use it on prism pour, you can use the code on um, the resin art, if you're, if you like to use resin, which I do. Um, you can use it on the primary elements, the glitz, so it's, it's a great way to try out the beautiful sparklies and save yourself some money. Um, some of the previous sets that were available as sets for a limited time, like the recent Glitz sets. Even if the promotional period for the Glitz itself, the set, 
is over, you can still buy them individually. So, um, so like the Greek Isles and the Laguna Azul that are part of those glit sets, which is the semi-opaque primary elements, you can find them under the glitz colors in the primary elements collection. So if you missed out on those and you still wanted to get them, they are so much fun to work with. So um, don't miss out, just know that they're in a little bit of a different section. Also, if you've never used primary elements before and you want to try them, sometimes people ask me, you know, which ones would you suggest? And if you're new to using pigments and primary elements or whatever, I would definitely suggest starting with those just because you're going to use those that have a little bit more opacity. And sometimes um, that can just be challenging for people who are kind of learning how to incorporate pigments into their paintings. Um, you just want to make sure that you take advantage of, of that opportunity. Um, they're all fantastic to use. It just kind of helps with the learning curve because there is a little bit of a learning curve when you're dealing with working with pigments. Sorry, I touched that up in the wrong place and that was not working out for me. So I just dabbed it with a little bit of that color. What I did to fix something was worse than the problem itself. So yeah, we'll just uh, blend a little, huh? So yeah, I'll bring you down for a close up. I'm gonna pop some bubbles clean off my hands and then yeah it's a little crazy because I use too much paint but I really like it so I'll bring you down shortly all right you wonderful people now this is going to dry probably a little bit darker but here um, is our bottom left hand corner you can see how the Laguna Azul is sort of gently blending a little bit with the Indian Spice, so it's given us almost a green gold in the mix there. And then this is our top left-hand corner, and I love how that passion is um, kind of gently blending with the Greek Isles, because passion has a little bit of a blue shift, or like a blue-violet shift, so it's a great complement. And I love how we have these lines that almost look like we drew them. That's what's kind of fun about these marble pours is it looks almost like we enhanced it with like a, a Posca pen or something. And, um, but we didn't. I love this little pop of color right here. And um, yeah, these are just a lot of fun. Like this is one of those you can't really screw it up kind of a pours. And you know, we need those every once in a while because we all have those bad painting days where <laughs> everything goes wrong. And sometimes you need to roll a marble around a canvas, you know? And so, yeah. I love the all the colors represented right here. And you can't beat that sparkle. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. Um, so, so, yeah. Uh, feel free to head on over to Primary Elements. Use that code Mandy1120. Uh, the Indian Spice is going to be in the Bling It section. Um, Passion will be in the regular Primary Elements section. And then the other two colors um, will be in the Glitz collection. I will list all the colors that we used below. Um, I also recently um, started working with... Um, a wonderful company that sells boom gels so there is a discount code below for the boom gel stain which um, we'll be incorporating in some blooms in the future so check that out I'm really excited to try those out I have seen some beautiful work with them but I haven't really gotten a chance to really use them a lot so I'm very excited um, there is an upcoming collaboration this Sunday uh, with Muna and Angie and I so uh, stay tuned for those videos we are going to do some Dutch pours and if you follow my channel you know I need to practice my Dutch pours so I hope that it turns out well and it's not a disaster I, I know theirs won't be but I hope that mine is not so I wanted to do kind of a simple pour today so that I can really focus on that anyway thank you all for your support please like and subscribe if you're not already and um, join our Facebook group, Fluid Art Friends, listed below. We'd love to have you join.
And this will be um, available for purchase if anyone's interested. It's a 14 inch level one canvas, um, assuming it dries well and I don't like drop it on the floor or something. So let me know if you're interested. Um, anyway, thank you guys so much. Take care.